Good afternoon. Today is Tisha B'Av. In fact, till midday, we didn't sit on a chair. We sat on the floor. Last night in temple, we said lamentations. We took off the parochet, the beautiful cover that adorns the ark. We took it off. We sat on the floor and we sang Eicha in a sad and bitter voice. Tisha B'Av is the saddest day of the year. And just yesterday in Shul, we read the prophecy of Isaiah. Shabbat Chazon, we read Chazon Yeshayahu ben Amotz, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amotz, how he envisions the destruction of the temple through the Babylonians 2,500 years ago, nearly 2,600 years ago. And the words are just so painful, so gruesome. They're poetry and sadness. And the famous words of Isaiah that Jerusalem became Kizona like a harlot. He envisions the destruction that will happen to Jerusalem. Yet that's chapter one of Isaiah. But immediately later in chapter two of Isaiah, this same prophet Isaiah becomes the greatest prophet and messenger of hope. His words in Isaiah chapter two sit at the UN, on the outside of the UN in New York, of nations coming to serve God. And then later in Isaiah chapter seven, the famous words of Isaiah that are mentioned so often of nations turning the swords into plow shields. In a time when the world will be when the world will be filled with God's knowledge, the pursuit of God's knowledge just as water fills the ocean. Here came a man, a prophet, one of the greatest prophets of the Jews, who gave a vision of destruction in the most gruesome details. He says in chapter one, the more you will pray, the less I will listen. Yet in chapter 2, he pivots to so much hope. And in chapter 7, some of the greatest words of Isaiah are said this. And the same as with Jeremiah. The first two weeks, we read the vision of Jeremiah, which is a vision, the first two weeks of the three weeks, we read Torah from Jeremiah, which is a vision of pain, of destruction. He wrote Lamentations. Yet he, even Jeremiah is the one who tells us that the Jewish people are eternal, who promises that God will keep the Jewish people eternal in Jeremiah chapter 31. Judaism has been a religion and the people of hope. Throughout trials and tribulations, we've given so much hope. Judaism has kept hope alive and hope has kept the Jewish people alive. Because our greatest prophets through the darkness and through the destruction, we're able to see beyond the hill and see the hope that lie ahead. And that's the story of Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av, we fast, we mourn, we sit on the ground, we cry, we lament at the time when we had the Beit HaMikdash. But Tisha B'Av, we don't say confession. And Tisha B'Av, the rabbis tell us, is the day that Mashiach, the Redeemer, was born. Because Tisha B'Av, we also have hope. For 2,600 years, Al Nares Bavel Shom Yashavnu, as we say at the beginning of our grace after meals from King David, the Jewish people sat at the banks of the river of Bavel and cried for the days of redemption. But for so many years, we said the words, Yimesh Kachei Chiru Shalayim Tishkach Yimini, if I forget. Jerusalem, I forget my right hand. For 2,600 years, wherever we were, we had the hope of Yerushalayim. And today, we envision and we see Jerusalem being rebuilt. Jerusalem being lived in again by the Jewish people. Because we never gave up, because we had hope, we returned to the land of Israel, to the city of Yerushalayim. Growing up in New York, there was a remarkable man, Rabbi Nissen Mangel. In fact, I'm very good friends with his son, Mendy, who's the Chabad rabbi in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, has many children, 
Rabbi Shluchim of the Rebbe in Ohio and all over, a remarkable family. Nissen Mangel was 10 years old when he came to Auschwitz. And he was 11 years old when he was freed from Auschwitz. He was one of the youngest, if not the younger survivor to make it out of Auschwitz. Twice he met and encountered Dr. Mengele Yemach Shemoy, who tried to do an experience, experiment with him and twice he survived it. On the day that they were liberated from Auschwitz, his father was killed. His father, Eliezer, who was also in Auschwitz with him. And at that point, he was sent on the death march without his father, who was with him the whole time. And he was weak. He was a young boy of 11 years old. He was like a skeleton. He was emaciated. He had a bone in the bottom of his foot that was pushing, pushing through his emaciated legs. And he was in so much pain. And they had to march and they couldn't eat for seven days straight. All they could eat was the mud, the snowy mud. And the, the German Nazis were watching them. And if you sat down or moved out of line for a minute, they shot you in the head and you were dead. It was the end of you. You had no choice. And that's why most people didn't survive. But at one point, Rabbi Nissim Angel gave up hope. He said, how could I do this anymore? I can't. He had no will to live anymore. He was in so much pain. He had just lost his father. He was emaciated. He was starving. He was fearful. He was alone in the world. And he just wanted to step out of line and let a Nazi officer shoot him in the head. And he'll be pain for one minute and he'll die. And that will be the end of his misery. But at that moment, he remembered a story. He remembered he was transformed back to a time sitting at his father's table his mother and his father, they made the most delicious Shabbos table. And his father often told him a story about this chassid who came to visit the Baal Shem Tov. And he came from one of the cities in Ukraine to the other. His wife was pregnant, but he wanted to come visit the Baal Shem Tov. And he came to visit the Baal Shem Tov. And while he was visiting the Baal Shem Tov, he was told that his wife was in labor. He has to come back. But it was night. So we told the Baal Shem Tov, I'll go back in the morning. And the Bashem Dev says, no, go back now, go back to your wife. And he looks at the Bashem Dev and he says, I can't. To go back to my town, I have to go through the forest. The forest was full of bandits and murderers and thieves and killers. He says, how can I go back? I can't, I'll wait till the morning. I'm alone, ich bin alain. I'm scared to go because I'm alone. And at that moment, the Bashem Dev looked at him and said, a Yidis came on the A Jew is never alone. Wherever he goes, God is with him. And he left on his journey to go back to his wife. Ebnissim Angel, on his death march from Auschwitz, emaciated, ready to give up, with no hope in sight, remembered this story that his parents, that his father who was just murdered by the Nazis in Auschwitz, ingrained within him. Ayid is came on the a Jew is never alone. Wherever he goes, the Almighty, God goes with him. And at that moment, he decided to march along. And guess what? He marched along. And although most people died in the death march, he survived. And today, Tzalanga Yarin, for many long years, he's probably nearing 90. He lives in New York. He has a family, L'Shem Teferes, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren observant Jews, proud Jews, parents of large families, grandchildren who fought and fight in the IDF to protect Israel. All from those words of hope. Ayidis came on the Shdalein. Isaiah might have given us the most devastating vision of destruction, but he then gave us the most promising vision of hope. A message of hope that has kept the Jews going through what felt like an eternity of exile, of suffering, of pain. The Jewish people have brought and kept hope in this world and continue to do it. And at the darkest moments of Tisha B'Av, when we're so sad and pained by memories of destruction, Tisha B'Av is a time when the spies came back, the first calamity of Tisha B'Av and said they don't want to go into Israel 
and God promised they will all die. Tisha B'Av, we lost the first temple. We lost the second temple. Tisha B'Av, we had the rebellion of Bar Kochva quashed and 60,000 people in one day died in Beitar. Tisha B'Av is the day of expulsion in, in, in 1492 of the Jews who lived 1,000 to 2,000 years in Spain. The expulsion happened at Tisha B'Av. But yet Tisha B'Av is the day when the Redeemer is born because Jews never give up hope. Even when they're marching, marching on the death march out of Auschwitz and even in the Holocaust and even in Rome and even in Babylon. And because of that hope, we persevere and we continue. And we will have a day when we will, the world will turn swords into plowshields and the world will be a place filled with God's knowledge and the pursuit of godliness. May it happen speedily in our day. Have an easy end to the fast. If you want to join us for Mincha and Meyer and Torah reading, we will do it at 7.30 at the Shoal. And have an easy fast and an enjoyable break to fast. God bless you.